what's up? Um, today we are going to focus on getting Alphonse Elric done. Uh, last time we did Edward. Um, sorry, I just had a bit of trouble pronouncing his name there. Edward. But yeah, there he is. And he is all finished. So now we're going to move up to this section here and get Al done. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to focus the camera and get started. So now that we've uh, refocused, we've moved up and are raring to go, I'm going to start by drawing this curve, which is going to be obviously the curve of Alphonse's back. Um, it's just a rough curve, really. Not really any typical angle to it, as with this one, just that it's pointing down. Um, but they intersect at that point, which is, I'd say, in line with... Uh, the bit of his hood that's most sticking out um, and then it's just a straight down line really and we can start getting the shoulder in place which is going to be a beefcake of a circle just uh, dropping in this bit for the um, the top segment of his back uh, just a rough guideline of that uh, of course we'll get further into details in a bit but I just want to get that in so that you can uh, get a rough gist of it and then we can start to add in his shoulder uh, so I'll do so now we're just going to carry on his uh, front first though just to get the uh, so I mean that's that's parallel to his back really um, that line is and it's just going to meet down by his cape kind of in the intersection of that cape that we drew in earlier as well and now we can start getting the shoulder in place which is a bit more simpler which is just a an oval really and thinking about it, it looks quite big so I might need to just <coughs> sorry decrease that in a bit um, but yeah I mean that's just not really much to say of that to be honest it's just an oval um, of course you gotta make sure make sure to uh, get the correct shape um, that lower curve uh, which is at the bottom of that uh, oval shape uh, is parallel to the top uh, curve as well that's where his uh, his elbow is going to start to come out, not his elbow, his uh, muscular part I don't even, I can't remember what that part's called, the upper arm uh, that'll do um, so yeah, we can start to drop that in now. Um, I like to think of this shoulder plate as kind of looks like a Metroid. Um, if you haven't played Metroid or seen a Metroid, then that's not going to help you. Kind of looks like Kabutops. Uh, Kabuto. Kabuto. Um, with those two sharp bits looking a bit like teeth. Um... But yeah, I mean, his his lower his upper arm, sorry, is another easy shape, really, just a rectangle, and they're all constantly pointing diagonally down to his uh, to Edward. Uh, I'm actually going to bulk out this back a bit more because it's looking pretty slim. Um, so it actually needs to be more round than that. Um, so we're going to say that that back actually meets um, at the tip of that hood. Not the best basic guidelines ever, but live and learn. I'll, I will get better at this. Um, like I say, I don't know how to teach people. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is where we start to get the elbow in. Um, that is going to be more of a, um, it's just a simple rectangular shape really. Um, of course this part that I'm drawing now is going to start to curve up because that's where it's, um, where the gap in the armour would be. And of course there are going to be spikes around this area as well. Um, part of his elbow. Just need to get the right angle on these really. I 
of course it's three dimensional so we need to add that line in just to find the lines a bit more But I mean, generally his arm is just at a, a 90 degree angle, um, although that 90 degree angle is at a bit of an angle, if you get me, it's not quite, like it's not a flat 90 degree angle, his arm is at a uh, a bit of a slant, pointing downwards, but his, uh, his upper arm corresponding to his lower arm is a 90 degree angle, I would say. We can start to get that sleeve in, that undergarment that is underneath the armour course um, just get a bit of a crease in there and um, yeah so I'm going to start to get his chest plate in as well now we can start adding on that and that is a lot more easy um, that top line is basically if you just look it's basically the same as where his neck piece is uh, his collar if you will and then that part just curves down into um just short of the uh intersection of his elbow and upper arm so that's quite a simple shape to draw in um but yeah i mean how about i say i'll start drawing in the uh other guidelines now for the uh the hand the leg the head and that kind of stuff and then we can come back into the details Okay, so we went a bit crazy on uh, the guidelines there. We um, got the well, I, I went, I ventured it alone and got the head and the knee, and the arm and everything done without you. So it's a great tutorial. If you ever want to learn how to draw Alphonse, just uh, don't watch this video because I've just completely gone past it. But I mean, as you can see, um, I got the shoulder in and it's just it's just a matter of getting that uh that first basic um stick line in as usual i mean obviously if you saw the first first uh part before i just did that time lapse um you'd have seen that i didn't do that i didn't make a stick figure but by doing that it always helps me out um getting the the correct figure and i mean of course with a hand it's just a basic circle um with his knee it was quite an easy shape and you saw me draw the chest earlier <coughs> I made a slight alteration to that, but it wasn't really much. But, um, yeah, uh, and as for the head, it's just like, it's that weird shape. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, what I did is I did, I got this out of the way so that we can focus on the details of the head, because that's going to be the most important part, obviously. So I'm just going to start to outline um, some of the uh, the plates on the back of the head. That um, it's kind of like what you usually get in helmets, like that the metal plates that overlap each other. Like for example, the armor on Ed's arm from before, uh, those wing things, the shields that are referred to them as, I believe. Um, but yeah, I mean these are just like plates that are just overlapping, uh, just simple rectangles on the back. Um, just think of them going across half his head. Basically, just gets that uh, sense of line in between the uh, back of the head and the front, and uh, I mean that should do it for where you got to line up the uh, the plates. Of course, this one uh, does go up diagonally because that's where it's going to meet the uh, the top of the helmet. Um, so it's a bit of a zigzag shape, not so much of a rectangle as the bottom one. Um, but of course, well, so far, of course, that bottom one is also going to. Uh, be a zigzag and from that top line we can start to get uh, the eye eyelid line in um, just by curving that around really 
um, curving that to meet the front of the head uh, helmet um, but yeah um, so I'm just outlining that top of the head a bit more making it a bit more flat because it doesn't actually need to be that round um, and I can kind of get the eye, s eye hole in um, obviously where you would see out the helmet usually or where Al's eyes are um, so I can start to get that in a bit it seems a bit too close to the edge of the helmet um, so I'm going to pull that back a tiny bit um, a very tiny bit still looks a bit close a bit too big as well um, although actually it, it might actually be just be the front of the helmet that needs adjusting given the fact that his yeah I'd say so his, his arm actually needs to be a bit wider to be honest so I am adjusting that line it's probably a good job that uh, I didn't do that part in tutorial about how to draw his head because then you'd all be like well, I've drawn the head how you wanted me to, and now you're rubbing it out and making me draw it again. Which is basically what's going on in my drawing so far, but like I say, my key is trial and error, and so... So, a pencil that's been a bit weird. These new fandangled pencils, I don't know how to keep hold of them properly. Uh, but now I can start to... Um, just need to rub this bit out. His eye is still a bit too big, I think. But um, it, the uh, that part of the helmet actually needs to, it isn't in line with um, that plate line. It's like slightly underneath it, if you get me. Um, and then this is just a straight, straight line, straight down to that chin. Um, and we can start to analyze that a bit more. Um. And make it a bit three dimensional with that curve as well. Uh, because obviously he's looking straight at us. And there's his mouth. That is his mouth. He looks very cheerful and chirpy. Um. So you can just analyze his eye a bit more and start to uh, curve the top of the head round uh, where the front of the helmet is going to be, where his spike uh, like his horn is uh, well, not his horn, the horn on the helm, the horn on the suit of armour and um, so of course we just need to get the top of that head right because it is more flat than uh, the original line that I drew that was quite uh, round uh, I do need to make it a bit flat but um, I said the distance is about right, how, uh, how I first drew it. Look, it does need to be, be a bit quite... <sighs> quite high up. <sighs> uh, I'm tired. Um. Uh, but yeah, I'll with my new tutorials, like... After the last tutorial of this video, I will aim to do a bit better, think more of the viewers and be like, yeah, screw my last videos, you want to know how to draw something, well, here's a basic shape for you, because that might actually help instead of me just drawing a head and getting everything down. Um, <clears throat> it is quite hard to narrate on these things where it's basically just like, draw this line, and draw this line, and draw this line, because the end of the day it's not helping you and it's not a great explanation by myself either um, completely going against that I'm just gonna say with this one um, this bit that I'm drawing now it's kinda like a little lizard claw that's my basic shape for this it's a lizard claw it kinda looks like a star I guess like if you just did a curvy star um, but without the last two prongs, prongs, points, that might be a bit more accurate to what I mean. Um, but yeah, the collar just needed a bit of adjusting there, and uh, I'm going to stretch that over a bit more. 
um, and have it be a bit straight uh, the front of it because it doesn't need to be so angled um, and that lizard paw isn't looking quite right it's looking too sharp to be honest um, and not quite angul angular like I want it so I'm going to uh, adjust that slightly um, God. Sorry, I needed that. Right. So. Um. So that's the lizard claw. Gone, really. Um. I made it a bit flatter. It didn't need to be as curved as it was before. Like I say, a bit more angular. And we can start to get the slots in in his helmet. Now there's just. Here we go. Basic shapes. Just draw rectangles. Simple rectangles. About the width of his eye. And uh, the left vertical line lines of the slots run through the middle of his eye. If you think about it like that, then there we go. Kind of a kind of a guideline there. And look, they're just rectangles. Uh, the distance between them both is the same as the size of the rectangle, I would say. And uh, that was pretty good for a tutorial. And of course you've got that simple circle in the middle of the uh, the lizard foot. Uh, which is looking more like a frog foot now. Um, which is just like a bolt. Which is attaching the helmet together. Really. Um, but yeah, so we're starting to get that zigzag in for the bottom um, plate of the back of the helmet. Um, so we can just get that in. I thought it'd be, be a better idea to mainly focus on the uh, the head rather than anything else on Alphonse because, of course, getting the helmet right is always going to be the the most important part about him. As for the body, you can kind of just like sort of get the shapes, but obviously the most detail is going to be in the head, because that's where the most shapes are going on. Whereas you can just get some basic lines in for the rest of his body really that's my my very poor excuse for not actually helping you guys out at all um, but then that that line just corresponds to the same as the uh, the other zigzag line and of course um, is mostly going to be hidden at the back of that lizard foot and we can start to get the very back of the helmet to curve up here um, Let's get that to curve up now and uh, go across to the top of his head. Of course, it's not really looking exactly like him now, but we still do need to get the uh, the rim of the top and uh, his horn, the helmet's horn, and um, his hair piece in as well. But basically, uh, from the zigzag, you just want to draw a straight line going up, and it comes to a point, and just comes back down again and curves around to make that front piece of the helmet where his horn is attached. That curve, which is kind of like your uh, your, it's, it just looks similar to what a usual like coat of armor would look like. That great part being at the top. Um, that similar kind of shape and uh, we can start to get the horn in now that we've got that part in uh, I mean his head's nearly done to be honest I just need to get his uh, horn in place and his uh, the top of it as well for his hair piece to come out of to shoot out of and we've also got to get his mouth in place it shouldn't be all that hard. Um, but I mean the top of his head is not as flat as I drew it. It does start to curve in at the front of that uh, that visor plate 
thing. It's not really a voice play on this, but I'm just going to call it that because it's that shape. Uh, and it does, as you can see, it does curve in there, and now uh, we can start to get the horn in. And I believe that that needs to, be, yeah, it needs to be more angled. That's better. Um, and I'm going to make that more round as well. The uh, the end where it actually joins on. This is looking quite flat there. Um, if we just rub this bit out, this middle bit out, I might be able to get a better uh, approach at it. Um, and I mean, the, the it doesn't need to be that long really. The tip needs to be curvier as well. Um, but I can sort that out in a bit. And if I just uh, rub out the top of that, because it's, it seems to be tucking in a bit too much really. Um, make that more angular that's better and uh, just curve in the top of the helmet now <laughs> we need to sort out the angle for this um but then we can start to get the mouth in place. Um, so basically, how you want to start it is it's basically just three triangles uh, pointing down. Uh, don't think about the ones that are pointing up because it starts to get a bit confusing. So there's three triangles pointing down. Okay, so uh, now that we've got the mouth in place, we can start to um, get the hair piece that's on the top of his helmet in the right position so it's just a simple triangle really um, it's like a curved triangle so it's not a simple triangle at all it's like a curved one it's a curving triangle the best form of a triangle um, it shouldn't be too hard to draw that top bit so I'm gonna uh, kick back and relax while I, I don't have to um, force myself to give a tutorial on that top bit for a basic shape but I mean we, we've got his head in place which is the main thing and his head's look actually looking pretty good it looks like Al so that's the best thing really and now we're just going to draw his hair and, I'll, and it's going right out the frame <coughs> but it's just a simple curvy line which just shoots down the back uh, of his back <laughs> the back of his self it's just simple curve and I can double that line up so that it's actually a strand like a thicker strand uh, and then this is just going to curve a lot more so that it actually like reaches quite down his back so that it can curve back again so that the hair looks a bit more free um, and is actually like whipping in the wind um, looks like it's more st like sticking out more rather than just like falling down his back. I'm actually going to erase some of this uh, because I think the curve needs to be a bit more um, natural, and the line needs to be less thick. But um, I mean, as for his body, his body shouldn't be too difficult to. Um, get the hang of really it's just it's just a lot of round shapes really is I mean if you think of his center portion as being kind of like a potato um, but the top's more flat which really doesn't help as a description but I just saw it and it looked like a potato so we're gonna go with that um, and then we can start to get the hair to slot right into that top triangle piece where it's actually coming out of uh, but I mean in this last part we're going to uh, get the, the hair piece done like I'm doing now and we're going to get the spikes on his shoulder as well and I think with that <coughs> uh, 
<coughs> oh, with that, I'm going to choke. With that, I think we can call it a day with Al. Um, so I'm just starting to get the spikes in place now. Basically, this center spike, we're going to make that uh, go right into that intersection of the two plates. So that shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, so point them right into that corner. And we can just angle them down and... Um, make the lines a bit darker so that you can see them a bit better and um, actually gonna make that a bit wider because uh, the spike isn't looking so big we need to make it a bit bigger and now we can start to get this one in as well uh, actually start to get the um the strap where his shoulder piece uh actually slots in and uh this is just like the the back of his shoulder where you've kind of got that groove uh where the spikes are actually coming from so if we just uh make these lines a bit more three d actually so we can add these lines in here to make to show that s slot that we've been looking at and uh, that's where the strap is going to go and that hooks around the um so that's it's, it looks a bit like a buckle um for lack of a better word that's that's the only one that I've got it's kind of like a buckle and then the strap straps around that buckle and it just ties everything in so that then disappears to the underarm so I'm just going to draw that in and make it a bit more uh, three dimensional by adding some lines and we can then rub out where that uh, buckle was because obviously that's not going to be seen underneath the strap <laughs> so we can uh, get a bit of a better angle on that now Just slot that right in there. If these videos actually help any of you guys, please let me know because. I will be gobsmacked if anyone actually manages to um, understand what the hell I am saying um, like what the hell I actually mean um, so yeah let me know in the comments but yeah um, so I'm just doubling the other line up on the other side uh, make it thinner due to the uh, proportion of it considering that that part is further away from us that uh, actually needs to be thinner on that side um, so once I get this line in place I can actually start to get the spike um, in place now so that's what I'm putting these dots here for and now I can actually start to make these dots meet to a point for that spike um, so I'm just going to get that in now bear in mind that this the two spikes on the sides aren't actually as big as the spike on the top I'd say. Uh, so, I mean, this one's actually looking pretty big, so we might just need to adjust that slightly uh, in a bit. But yeah, I mean, we know that it slots into that middle section, so just getting that line in there on either side so that we can uh, see that the middle spike isn't really affected by that and if we curve this round a bit more you'll actually see that it does continue on t uh, further on the shoulder plate 
Um, I mean, you're still not going to see the slot for the the top triangle, but uh, we can still we still got to draw those lines in. The angle that it's at, you won't see it, but uh, that should do it for the slot section, like the edges, because they don't run any further than that. I just need to get this other side in. <coughs> and we can just rub that middle bit out because obviously you can't see that on the spike. Um, Sorry, a bit of lead falling out there. So we're just sorting that back line out again. And uh, get this spike to be a bit more curvy. So at the moment they're looking more like triangles than... Uh What's the 3D triangle? A cone! That's not... I'm, I'm losing my mind here with this lack of words um cone it's looking like a cone now um but i mean the shading will probably bring that into place so uh, at the moment it's all right um and we're just going to get this tooth spike looking a bit better more accurate and we can get that curved round And I mean, there isn't really that much left to do on his entire body, to be honest. I'd say in terms of details, it's just the dents on him. We've got the uh, the basic shape in place. Um, well, we've got the I'd say the final shape in place, really. Once you get these spikes in, um, it's just really going to be the dents and the uh, the actual Formal Alchemist logo on his shoulder which you can draw in, in a bit or perhaps I might go into time lapse to do that but um, before even thinking about that we've still got one spot left to do so we need to think more on that just uh, erasing away at this top edge a bit more because it didn't look quite right and the point as well needs to meet a bit more naturally I think so that disappears onto the other side of the shoulder. If we just round this over, that's looking a bit better now. And we can start to get this third spike in. So it's just going to extend and start to point towards his uh, actual jawline. Well, the uh, the front of his mouth anyway, that you can't actually see uh, at this angle. But it literally points right towards there. Uh, and I mean, bear in mind that the gap between each spike is... Um, like virtually the same as well uh, about the width of one of the spikes the width of the uh, the base of the spike is about the width distance that you want to keep between the the spikes themselves um, and like I say they're going to be slightly smaller than the middle one um, not massively so but uh, I can get this bit better I think make it a bit more neater Just darken this line up a bit. It's looking a bit better. There's his uh, his chin that needs adjusting a bit. <laughs> See, like I say, trial and error is just constantly me, um, just me constantly um, rubbing stuff out and reapproaching it. Really, things if things don't look right at the start. You can always keep adjusting it, which is what I'm doing now. Um, so like I say, um, the whole reason why I wasn't doing two toys before is because the sheer amount of time and the fact that at the end of the day I'm not like other artists and stuff like that on here. Um, because they're incredible. They can like draw these lines straight away, like without having to erase anything, and that's crazy. And I'm sad to say it, but I'm not one of those crazy, awesome guys uh, who can do that. So, I mean, 
those spikes that I've done are pretty much in place and I'm just sawing the chin out um, but what I'm going to do now is I would say he's pretty much finished like all of his basic lines are in place so I'm just going to add uh, add all the dents over his body um, to make him look more finished because that will that'll fill his uh, body out a bit more going to add all the dents to his body I'm going to add the, uh, the Fullmetal Alchemist logo sign thing on him and basically uh, basically just gonna get all finished stuff so I'm just gonna jump into tile lapse one more time get all the final details in place um, and then yeah come back and discuss what I did so yeah Okay, so as you can see, I added a, a, a lot more detail um, to Al, got some shading in, which really isn't necessary considering that it's all going to get rubbed out later anyway, but you can see that I've got the uh, the curves of the back done, um, more detail on the strap uh, that I was speaking about earlier, the um, the little the loincloth as well, got that in place, and bits on the leg sorted out, and his ha hand as well, I drew a load of rocks, um, more notable the uh, the elbow piece I actually adjusted so that the spikes actually look better I'm really happy that I decided to adjust them because they do look um, a lot better than they were um, they look more three dimensional and look more like he's actually there which is great um, so yeah I mean I'm just gonna wrap this up here now uh, so my voice is just being stupid because I really need to cough but yeah I'm just gonna wrap this up here now uh, Al's finished, Ed's finished, so I guess that um, we're good to move on to the third part. Thank you very much for watching guys, I really do appreciate it, um, let me know in the comments what you thought, obviously it was god awful as a tutorial because you just don't learn anything here, um, but well, I hope that you did take away something anyway, uh, if it helps in the slightest, but please tune in for part 3 where I'll do the inking and finish it off.